To understand how a meander forms, you need to remember this diagram because it's the basis of it all. It shows there's more erosion on the outside bend and deposition on the inside bend. This side is the outside bend of the meander. And on the outside bend of the meander, what you can start to see is that there's more erosion because that's where the water flows at its fastest. So here's the outside bend. And if you look at my wellies, I'll try not to drop my phone in. Um, the water is really, really deep. So what that's showing is that on the outside bend of a meander, there's much more erosion, which deepens it much further. And also you can see that on here, it's created a river cliff. So there's more erosion on this side of the bend. If we take across the other side of the meander, we walk across this side here, what we'll start to find is you can start to see some deposition occurring on the inside bend of the meander, okay? And if you look at my wellies now, they're not in the river particularly, the river's not particularly deep here. So on the inside bend is more deposition. So the deposition occurs on the inside bend because it's much slower. The, isn't, the river isn't flowing at its fastest. And you can see down here, sorry, my dog's in the way, all the deposition that's occurring on the inside bend of this meander. So here we've got an example of a meander forming. You can clearly see on the outside bend that the water is moving much faster. Remember that's called the Thalweg, the Thalweg which is the, the river's fastest flow. So there's more erosion that's occurring on the outside bend and that's creating a river cliff. On the inside bend here, there's deposition. The river's flow is much slower. So material's been put down. So we've got a slip off slope. So erosion leads to a river cliff due to the Thalweg, the river's current flowing at its fastest on the outside bend, and deposition on the inside bend because the river is flowing much more slowly. Therefore, we get a slip off slope where material is deposited. So I'm stood in the meander itself. Here's the outside bend. Oh, you can see how deep my well is into the water. It's really, really deep because there's loads of erosion. And on the inside bend, I'll just take a few steps up. On the inside bend, it's much shallower because there's more deposition. So there's a slip off slope. So you can see the outside bends of meanders are really quite dangerous because they can be very, very, very deep. And thankfully, I'm in quite a small meander. But if I was in a much bigger meander, I could be up to my waist or even up to my neck being stood in the outside bend of the meander. If you're aiming for grade seven and above, you'll also need to know about pools and riffles. So we've also learnt about how pools and riffles make the meander become even more exaggerated. So in the middle of this river here, you can see that there's been material that's been put down in the middle. This big rock, for example, has been deposited and it's created a riffle. So the flow of the river is interrupted in the middle, okay? And we already know that on the outside bends, it started to deepen. And on the outside bends, that's where there's pools. So here's a riffle in the middle. The pools are on the outside bend. So because the river's flow is interrupted, this creates something called helicoidal flow. And helicoidal flow is a process whereby the material in the river moves in a corkscrew motion. And because it moves in a corkscrew motion, it means that there's more erosion on the outside bend and there's more deposition on the inside bend. Here's a quick reminder of how a meander forms. A meander is a bend in a river and when the water flows in this meander, it flows towards the outside bend and the river's fastest flow is called its Thalweg. So therefore, on the outside bend, we have more erosion and on the inside bend, we have more deposition. 
If we were to draw a cross section of the river across this line here, it would look like this. It would be much deeper on this side, forming a river cliff, and it would be much shallower on this side, forming a slip off slope. There's the water line. So here's the river cliff, and here's the slip off slope. And I'll just put some sediment in to show that this is where deposition is occurring on this side of the bend, and on this side of the bend, there's more erosion.